Hey guys, it's Vulcan Lift here. I'm sorry for the hiatus with streaming and everything. Life's been a bit crazy, but um, I've decided with the new year to try and follow along with some 30k content um, spearheaded by the one and only Warhammer Rose. Um, sort of a little bit of a challenge to see what I can do with this and I quite like the idea about doing these vlogs so I'm going to try and stick with this and produce some nice little vlogs documenting my uh, progress with my army. Um, so yeah let's get straight into it. Um, I've got a lot to show you as this demon's army has been on the back burner for me for quite a long time and with a new 30k edition and potentially some new rules updates for demons, um, demons of the rune storm specifically, um, I'll show you how I'm coming along with my army, um, how I'm going to paint them and base them and all of that jazz as we develop and then we'll film some battle reports, some more content featuring the 30k stuff. So yeah, let's get straight into the video. Here we go, starting off we've got some models that I'm going to be using for this Demon's Force. So I've picked, uh, well one of my friends Quill has sorted me out with some one page rules STL files which are absolutely stunning. I've done some test prints which I'm going to show you shortly. Um, I've not managed to print all of them um, as I'm not going to use all of them. I do have uh, some of the original normal Games Workshop corn models because my Demon's Force, I want it to be corn inspired but it's going to have a magma theme to it like flame demons that sort of thing um, Cygnus Prime sticks out in my memory from one of the Blood Angels books not to um, spoil it too much for you guys but Horace tricks Sanguinius at some early in the heresy to send him on a bit of an errand get him out of the way and try and convert him to his course uh, you know through treachery and demons and craziness so with that in mind i wanted to do a bit of a themed army similarly to that but with my own spin on it so looking at these one page rules demons they've got a lot of really unique sculpts um we've got some furies we've got some um like blood letter style things we've got juggernauts we've got some dogs um, which i'm going to use as like corn hounds but i actually have the not the new updated corn hounds that they produced by games workshop uh, a couple of years back in that box set so i'm going to be using those um maybe print some of these dogs as well just to mix things up a bit so we've got a little bit of variation things with demons of the ruin storm which is this is the 30k demons army um things aren't as pronounced as they are in the 41st millennium um I would say that the demon uh, that the gods are just sort of finding themselves and there's all sorts of crazy entities trying to push their way into the reality when the ruin storm uh, hits the galaxy all sorts of crazy stuff's happening um like demons taking forms you would never expect um but from what i've read from the rules that came out um i think it was 2020 for 30k um you you had i think six different options to go with so you'd like theme your force a little bit like choosing your legion um and what that would give you is certain buffs and benefits uh, which i may go over in another video just to deep dive into that um but this could change because horus heresy 2.0 has come out and there's not been a demons update that i know of um to sort of counteract the older stuff although this is only two years old so it could still be quite relevant for a few more months to come so looking at this i've got a nice bit of variation i might vary the weapons they are multi-pose on these demons uh, which is quite handy um, we'll go have a look at some of these models here which is some close-ups i think these are going to be like bigger and chunkier versions of those blood letters um I'm hoping I might use these as brutes or something equivalent. Basically, what, what they've done with Demons of the Rune Storm is they've essentially given you a base size and then said, do what you want. Um, the only mo models that I'm aware of that came out from Forge World were the brutes. So I may pick up some of the Forge World ones. They are really nice models um, and they sort of go with the theme that I'm going to do. 
I might just green stuff some flames or that sort of thing on top of them, which is what I kind of plan to do with the rest of the army anyway, just to make things a bit more flamey and magmary. But you can see that they've got... They're not the same blood letters. Like, the, the old blood letters are, to me, one of my least favourite demons um, that they produced. Like, Nurgle had a huge update um, a couple of years back, and they just keep adding to it, you know, with... The Death, uh, Death Guard and all that sort of stuff. They really updated all of it. Loads of Nurgle goodness, Mortarian, etc. They are releasing Angron shortly from what we've seen. Um, and the model is gorgeous for that. But again, I've not seen any new Bloodletters to go with that. So these for me are going to be like a bit of a fresh palette. Um, they look really cool. The sculpting's really nice. Um, I love like the skull... Uh, like the faces are, are quite brutal. They don't look as dorky as the normal corn stuff does with that really elongated back head. So I kind of like that. I like the horns as well. And I think they're going to take some green stuff quite well when I start adding a couple of licks of flame perhaps behind the backs of the heads. Um, that's generally where I'm going to do it, I think. Um, but yeah, I'll play that by ear. Um, let's have a little look around. We've got these look like some of the HQ choices. Um, there's quite a few different ones like this. Uh, I like this one. I might use this one as a Shrike. Um, like I said, they've got some base size and stat blocks for the critters. And the Shrikes are like a flying monstrous creature. Um, I'm not sure if these are going to be big enough. I might have to scale them up and do a test print, see how I like the look of it. But the Shrikes are meant to be you know, pretty chunky, but with wings going to fly around doing some business. Um, we've got a remodeled uh, re version of the Blood Throne here, which I absolutely love. Um, I think, again, it's just fresh. Looks pretty cool. I don't know if I'll have a use for that in the army. We'll see. Um, we've got some... These, I think these are like Heralds. So I could use these as a maybe a lesser HQ choice, because you do get like... Um, you've got your main HQ choices. You've got Arch Demons. You've got your, your main Demon Lord. And then I think there's like a lesser demon HQ option, um, which these guys might fill that role quite well. But I do have like quite a few different models to try. Um, it came in two packs on the one page rules. So I showed you the first pack before and a few close ups. Now this pack is the second one that came out and you've got a huge version of like a juggernaut sort of uh, soul grinder equivalent demon here, um, which I do quite like the look of, but I already have some models which I'm going to be using for the larger demons. Um, this one here, the big winged uh, chap here, looks a bit like a bloodthirster uh, with a little bit of a twist. There are armor options, so you can change the weapons, um, but the cavalry is where it's at here for me. I will definitely be printing a series of cavalry um, because there's a stat block for those. There's also stats for like hounds equivalents, so I'll definitely be using my uh, my corn dogs or uh, <laughs> these versions as well just to mix and match I really like the uh, Karama Karanak model as they remade that model uh, in that box set um, a couple of years back with the newer version of the the corn hounds um, which are very cool and I'd like to use him I'm not really sure what I'd use him as I might just use him as a squad leader or something like that but he is on a slightly bigger base currently I might just adjust that um, pop him on the same base size as the rest of the squad and then he can be roaming around you know as this three-headed lovely lovely dog um, maybe add some additional bits to him so again add some flames and stuff like that to fit in with the motif that I want to go for um, but we'll see where we go with that um, <clears throat> I've got some ideas for the arch demon so the largest model that i can bring is an arch demon this thing comes at i think starting at around six or seven hundred points and then with upgrades you know you can go all the way up to a thousand points basically on on this model and it's going to be like a lord of war um you know like a primark equivalent big big money in terms of the, the model itself. I've seen a couple of people on the Demons of the Runestorm Facebook groups that have said that they're using, well, they're using all sorts of different stuff. Um, one of the models that stuck in my mind was the Archaeon uh, Dragon that I've seen people convert into the Arch Demon that they've used for their army. Um, but again, it, it's completely up to you, Demons of the Runestorm. That's the greatest thing about them is the sheer amount of customization, all of that jazz, it looks great. 
um, and that model is beautiful but I want something more magma -y. so what you can see here is the magma dragon from print your monster um, it's a kraken sculpt um, we have the files for it and um, this is actually we sell some of the print your monsters items on our Etsy store so this one is up on for sale there but I'm going to be printing this it's not huge but it's big enough and it looks dynamic enough that I think it'd be quite an interesting piece on the table to go with my magma themed army um, so yeah I'm really excited to get this model uh, printed up I may have to scale it up um, as it goes on one of the lot I think it's the large round base so it's the same base that Archaon goes on um, so that really really big base which I'll try to find or print one um, which is fine um, but yeah this is what the model I'm fancying using for that so um, next I'm just going to show you some of the prints that I've already done. So here we go with some prints we've already done. This, these are the Furies. So these are really interesting little miniatures. I really like these sculpts as they sort of have the corn theme running through from the uh, you know one page rules set um, with the great big bat wings. Um, I want to get probably 10 of these done. But this is the first print that I did. So I'm just sort of checking them out seeing like the scale of these compared to some of the other models and if i'm happy with them i might increase or decrease the scale um one of the prints didn't come out so great i think i lost an arm on one of them here we go um so i'm definitely gonna have to reprint him but that's no problem um there's not a lot of resin to use and uh, they're really nice so yeah i think i probably want 10 of these i may even go to 20 just so i've got two units of flying uh, little creatures that can get into the back line and go after your support weapons and stuff like this um, which might be quite fun if I came against some like iron warriors or something like that that likes to bring a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of gunfire support fire and that kind of thing they'd be quite good at locking up squads and stuff like that artillery next we've got the actual blood letters um, they're just called lesser demons of the ruin storm so like I say I can use them as anything um, these all printed out quite well I would say I'm using the Ellie go Mars water washable resin and um, they are pre-supported but I think again due to the cold conditions that we've been having like some of the layer lines are on these so again I might reprint some of these but I'm gonna aim to get 30 of these models done so when I'm converting them and stuff, I'm going to be adding additional bits like flames and stuff to them. So that will help differentiate the units from each other. So like differentiate the models. Um, but yeah, they look really cool. And the detail on them is cracking for a 3D print. So we've got a banner. I think it comes with a drummer as well. Uh, I don't know which one's particularly the drummer, but here's the set of drums that um, goes and attaches to him. So he's got that going for him. They are all multi weapon so you can swap all sorts of different weapon options um, for each model. So they've got like a little square plug as well. So you can slot that in. I don't know if this is his axe because there are the right arms for each specific model. So I've just grabbed them to show you basically. But yeah, you can see like the axes are quite cornate which is nice but not overly Games Workshop corn so I can sort of bring them into my own plans. I'm going to do like a <clears throat> like a magma effect on the blades as well, um, like a heat effect which I practiced actually recently. I painted up a Vulcan model um, for a client so yeah that was a lot of fun so I want to replicate that. Um, but yeah for this army like I say it's been on the back burner for me for a long time and um, I've just been picking up models so over the years whenever i've seen like a fire demon or anything like that i've just bought it and added it to the collection um this is a model i think it's one of the dungeons and dragons mi miniatures um that i got when i was working a long time back at uh, a retail store and yeah this is a kraken sculpt i'm not sure again not sure what i'm going to do with this one um i might green stuff some wings or something like that it's it's going to be a project of love because i'm going to put a lot of time into them and, and kind of make them how i want to look um, some of the other models have got this 
Mantic Games actually has produced a load of models that I've used for this collection. So I think this is called, um, well actually I don't know, <laughs> I can't remember the name of it, but it's like a big fire elemental demon. Um, I'm going to use this as a greater demon beast, it's called, or greater beast of the Ruin Storm because of the base size. So this is the larger base size. So the only ones bigger than this in the army is that massive over one I'll use for the arch demon. But the um, I'm going to use three of these in my army. So we've got this chap. Um, we've got this this lovely little chappy here, which is a bit of a kit bash as you. <laughs> so we've got the greater um, fire elemental from Mantic Games, which is again a stunning model. It's massive. As you can see, it's quite a tall piece. And this little magma plume, this is from that Fire Slayer's uh, Endless Spells pack, or invocations, or whatever they call it, evocations, um, that I just sort of added into the base, you know, with a lot of cork. Like I say, I did this years ago. I've cracked them back out. They need to get some love. So I need to go around and reprime some of the areas of some of the corks chipped off and stuff like this from being in the box. Uh, but I really like this. I wanted to tell a little bit of a story with this model. Um, you know, you can give, like, the great thing about the Demons of the Rune Storm, again, you can give them all these, like, custom options. So you can pay points to give them, like, um, like red hot blood or uh, spikes, or they can have a ranged attack. And there is actually a, a ranged attack, like a blast template. So I was thinking of giving this Great Demon Beast. A ranged attack with a blast template because he's like you know he's a fire elemental he's calling forth liquid hot magma and all of that jazz um so i really like this model i might run the demon beast the great demon beast in the squad of three i think that'll be really tough for people to deal with because they have a lot of wounds <laughs> and they're a very high toughness um and because of the tides of madness rules um basically from turn one and two they have plus one to their stats and then in the following three and four to uh, turn three and four their stats decrease uh, back to normal and then five and six you get minus one to your stats and then from if if the game goes to turn seven you get minus two to your stats so it sort of really like represents that narrative of the ebb and flow of the demons coming out of uh, out of the abyss you know out of the um, out of the warp and you know very strong initially and then slowly like as the power wanes getting weaker so it's very very cool little uh, bit of fluff and narrative to go with with the force um so yeah this is what i've got at the minute and um, there was one that i had started painting um i started painting this on the twitch stream uh, before Christmas. So this is going to be my Demon Lord. So this is going to be like my main HQ choice. And I do have a little bit of backstory around him. So I don't know if anybody recognises this model. Um, but it is a kit bash. And the base model is the Cyber Demon. From the Doom board game. So it's quite an obscure model, and if you didn't buy the Doom board game, you will never be able to own this sculpt um, because it was like a one run. You know, it's very very cool. I don't know if they've reprinted that board game since. Um, all we've done is green stuffed these demon prince wings uh, to sort of look like they're emerging from the back um, a bit more naturally. So the great thing about demons is you can make things look as a natural or unnatural as you like. Um, <clears throat> like I say, I had a bit of backstory about this model. So I wanted it to be like it was a, um, a dreadnought that has been present in the World Eaters um, Legion for quite some time. And during the fall of Angron at the Betrayal of Kalf, um, a lot of the, the Legion started to fall to chaos. And I just wanted it to be that this dreadnought was particularly bloodthirsty which is why he after you know he got injured or whatever he got entombed into a, a dreadnought chassis now over time he became more and more and more bloodthirsty and they would literally only wake him up 
um, and immediately like, he, he would be woken up in the drop pod being sent down so he would literally be bloodthirsty rage so he was one of the first dreadnoughts um, or legionaries shall we say that got corrupted by corn um, and I wanted it to be around him as a theme which is where this magma sort of theme comes from so <clears throat> with cyber demon you know i know these aren't contempt to dreadnought bits but you know you could just sort of imagine that over time it sort of mutated and the warps had its fun with him and reforged him into this critter um which i kind of like the idea of so with the paint scheme i've started it off um I need to come up with a better, faster way of doing it, but we're gonna have like a red, and I wanna have like it to look heated and very, very lively underneath the flesh, um, and then go to more of a dark black with, uh, you know, as it cools, it, it hardens and goes dark with magma. So I wanna have that across the model. Um, there are gonna be metallic parts on him, um, which I'm going to try and paint up to look like heated metal, generally speaking. Um, and then we're going to have some World Eaters colours coming through, like on these parts here, on the kneecap, on these little feet studs. So there's going to be some white in there as well and see how that looks, um, which I kind of like the idea of. Um, I was thinking also of trying to make it look like as they walk across the battleground, they're leaving a little bit of like a heated trail behind them, um, which I was kind of representing when I based um, this great demon beast here, like carved out some of the cork around his feet, um, which I'm going to try and make look like it's been superheated a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite the project. I've put some paint on them, um, but it's nice to get them out because I used to play Age of Sigmar and the I used to proxy these in my Age of Sigmar games. Um, and I do have some normal demons as well, Demons of Corn. So I've used these in the past in 40k games, proxying Bloodthirsters and, and the like. Um, but as this is specifically for Demons of the Rune Storm, you know, I'm trying to keep it in theme um, and use what I can. So like I said, I've picked up loads of stuff over the years. Like I've got a box that's full of cool little magma demons and fire elementals and stuff that I've picked up over the years. I want to try and implement all of those in the force for various characters or uh, squadron leaders or whatever it might be. So yeah, stay tuned for that as we're going to be putting out some more content with 30k. <clears throat> I would love to film some battle reports with uh, some different friends from the local area. Hopefully with Warhammer Rose as well as his uh, Ultramarines are getting built up there and painted. Um, so you can follow along on our progress there and stay tuned. Like we're not doing as many streams these days. So I wanted to try and do something at least. So YouTube and doing vlogs and this kind of thing alongside with the Dungeons and Dragons that we've been doing. Um, hopefully we'll get back to streaming on Twitch uh, in the coming weeks really. I do aim to do so. Sadly I've had to get another job. Um, so I've been busy sorting that out and um, trying to do my commissions as well on the side I am a commission painter at the end of the day just finished up a massive salamander's army and this is a nice refreshing treat from that I own a salamander's army and eventually I will paint it up uh, for use but for now I'm okay painting green I want to paint some fire and flame um, so yeah let's have some fun with it let me know what you think of the army if you've got any cool ideas or models that you've seen that would look really cool in this army let me know i'll catch you next time and don't forget to like and subscribe to the video